Welcome back to the Study and Go Abroad Fair here in downtown Toronto. My name is Jesse McDougall. Um, I'm here for CIUT 89.5 FM. The whole day, this whole morning, we've been speaking to presenters at this Study and Go Abroad Fair, schools that are offering students opportunities to further their career, to study in countries uh, all around the world, to learn different languages, and even to study medicine. And right now, we're speaking with uh, a representative from Curaçao. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Very well, very well. So your name is Fateh. Yes. And uh, from Curaçao. When I was speaking to your partners, they described you, sir, as the chancellor. Yes. What a title that is. I wish I could be a chancellor. <laughs> what are you the chancellor of? Uh, Avalon University School of Medicine. There you go. And in layman's term, I own the university. Oh, so. I see. So it's a privilege to have you uh, have me have you here. So yeah, so I appreciate- thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, for yeah. Well, we appreciate yeah. you coming and joining us on air. Um, we're also here with Eugene and Henry, volunteers at CIUT. How are you guys? Hi everyone. I just came from a line of interviews, and I can't wait for more. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself too. I love learning about the world and all the places. We also just had Andrew pop in, another volunteer. How are we doing, Andrew? Gives us a salute. Gives us a salute and, and shout out to Riley, of course, back at the station, uh, holding it down there. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to talk about an island nation very far away from us here in Canada, just off the coast of Venezuela, as I understand, about 50 miles off mm-hmm. the coast. So Fate, break down for us. What is this island all about? Well, I think the the most important thing is that it is one of the safest islands statistically in the Caribbean. Not only that, but it also is hurricane-free, which very few islands in the Caribbean say. Uh, It's very close to Venezuela, so the hurricanes don't touch it. In the last 150 years, there's not a single hurricane recorded in Curaçao. So those are safety features. But what we pride ourselves as a medical school is the education. It is one of the, it is the only medical school in the Caribbean that has two accreditations. And if I may spend a little time on accreditation, the accreditation is when a ECFMG or the accrediting agency certifies a few agencies to come and inspect the school. Okay. When they do that, they not only check the education, that, you know, pass rate for practicing in Canada and okay. all those things, but also they check about the living conditions, the safety of the students, mm-hmm. and how are they educated. In other words, if somebody has those accreditations, the parents and the students don't have to look around. It's taken care of by the accrediting agency. And we have two of them, although we need only one. I see. I see. Okay, you're above and beyond in the absolute accreditation area. The only one. <laughs> the only one. Yes. The only one. Okay, so you said that you own the university. Yes. What exactly, like I own, you know, a family dog, I own uh, my backpack and my books. What exactly does it mean to own a university? <laughs> well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, if I've, I'm in the field of medicine for more than 40 years. Okay. I taught medicine in the United States for over 35 years. Amazing. And uh, when I retired, I thought of starting a sort of a model of education business and started the medical school. Uh, When was the school founded? In 2003. I took over in 2006. So you were really there from the start almost. Absolutely, yes. Yes. And how big is the student body? We have uh, a hybrid program where what is known as basic sciences Mm. are taught on the island. And we have about 150 students there. And we have equal number of students in the United States where they do the clinical part. And they are in West Virginia, Chicago, and Phoenix. That's very interesting. Yeah. How long is the program usually? It's, you know, if you do the entire BSMD program, you do Bachelor of Sciences after high school for two years and the medical school for four more years. So total is six years. But then after high school, in six years, you're a doctor. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. So yes. when you were practicing, you said about 35 years or more that you've been, mm-hmm. you know, being yes. a medical doctor. Yes. Where were you in uh, around the country? In Ohio. In Ohio. I did my uh, uh, 
You know, I want my personal <laughs> experience. Well, I do. I want to know what it's like it's to be a doctor because I've you, always been on the operating table, so to speak. I've been on the other side of things. You've yeah. seen countless people, they're, they're, the problems they're, they're facing, but also probably some amazing solutions, people mm. that have overcome illnesses yeah, and yeah. such. So and what, I, is like, what is it like to be a doctor? I came to New York, did my residency, which is the training part, and expertise, what is known as fellowship in skin pathology. And then I moved to Ohio. And like I said, last 35 years, I both did practice skin pathology and taught at the local medical school. Okay. And then rather than retiring into oblivion, I thought I should use my expertise as a medical education expert yeah. in opening a medical school. That's terrific. Now my mother is a physician's assistant. She was mm -hmm. for her career. And so, uh, you know, she got to interact with lots of people every day. You're helping. It's a very, uh, you know, you have to it's communicate a lot. You have yeah. to communicate with your your um, your patients and see, you know, what's be what's befalling them. Um, so, how how would you go about that? You're doing, you know, maybe hundreds of conversations every week. Mm -hmm. You're meeting all kinds of people. Does yes. that have an impact on you? Absolutely. I I think, you know, that's a very very incisive question. Only because people ask you, what is your expertise and what do you do? It's super superficial. What you're asking is something what I feel. Yeah. And I think it, this is one of the very few professions, and I think your mother probably will appreciate this, where you just not affect the, the patient, but you also affect the families directly. There are very few professions in the world that can do that. So uh, you may be tired. You want to go and go home and take rest and stuff like that. But if there is a one slide that I look at and I can make a difference in the lives of the patient and the relatives, I do that because that gives me a lot more satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That's that's terrific. I'm glad that, uh, that in this profession you can have such a, a direct impact on people. Yes, you know? it's one of the very few. Yeah. And it, not only that, but you know, this is like my one-on-one -on -one practice you're talking about. There was one of the reasons why I opened or owned a medical school is because you graduate these doctors. They, we have over four, 500 of, of our own graduates who are practicing in the United States and all, all throughout the world. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, it's a blessing. You know, I was treating somebody as one-on-one -on -one and a few relatives. Now these 500 doctors will treat somebody so it really is an exponential growth of uh, satisfaction that I, I get. I have an important question for you, Fate. Yeah, uh, we're talking about the the medical, the medical industry, the you know, hospitals and such. <laughs> we'll yes. say in the Caribbean right now in Ontario, we're having a debate about public versus private edu um, uh, the hospitals mm -hmm. and healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, lots of um, medical workers are strongly in favor of public health care, um, but you know, lots of uh, conservatives um, are considering what private health care could look like, maybe more efficient, maybe um, you know, financially better. Where do you stand on that as someone with decades in the industry? Well, I may be biased because I come from practicing in the United States. Yeah. And I bias Where towards... Where healthcare is some of the most expensive absolutely, treatment in the whole world. Absolutely, you're right. But at the same time, it's one of the top healthcare in the world. So uh, there is a give and take. You know, if something that happens uh, in a patient and needs immediate care, I think the availability of getting it and taking care of the patient is higher in uh, the United States than over here. Nothing wrong with this system because this system in Canada affords medical care to multiple of people who have no means sure. or less means to really be taken care of. But then, there, like I said, there is a give and take. You have that, but then the delay of treatment sometimes works against you. Hmm. So, uh, I, you know, I, I have no opinions what is good and what is bad, but I, because I don't want to hurt people here. Sure. But I think you have seen examples where Canadians who have means cross over to Buffalo and get treatment there because Absolutely. it's not easily available here. Those who do not have the means 
they stay here. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're going to get inferior care. It may be a little delayed. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. A difficult question, one that's being talked about in the provincial building, <laughs> you know, yeah. a few kilometers yes. away from us. But, sir, I want to know about mm. the island itself. How, have you visited the university, and what is it like to travel there? I go there three times a year. I spend my winters there because I, Ohio is too cold. And uh, it, does, it works two ways. You know, it's my medical school. I have uh, 15 professors and uh, another 15 uh, para-professors teaching there. So when I spend three, four months in the winter there, I go to each classroom. I, I attend their lectures. I talk to the deans and make sure that they, uh, they get my input as to what it is. Because after all, I have 35 plus years of experience. May as well impart that to our deans and uh, other faculty members, but it is something that is very satisfying. And uh, I wish there was a, a video part where I can show you, mm -hmm. you know, the university is uh, over here in a multi-story building. The dorms are right across it. The walking distance is one minute. Okay. And then the students are right there. With the, and then that means they, they, they have availability of uh, library and all those things. And uh, I don't know. Uh, on an extended period of time when sure. they're there. Now, this island is right off of the uh, the country of Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the mixture between Latin and Caribbean influences so close to South America, um, and yet you've had, uh, you know, ethnic mixing of all kinds in the past, you know, four, five, six hundred years. What is it like to, to walk down the street and to smell the different street foods and such? It's unbelievable. I think you should go there. <laughs> I, I think so too. I, I'll, I'll tell you, it, and that is what many people don't realize, that our students from Canada, when they go there, many of them have not even gone out of Toronto. Forget about out of Toronto, Canada. When they go there, believe me, in the two to three years they are there, they come out with a different personality altogether. Mm -hmm. They are more tolerant. They they see the world in a different way. And then they adopt to that. And then they come to America and they try to apply whatever they have learned, not just medical knowledge, but the social part of it. They try to apply to the patients. You know, there is more empathy to these students who have gone through these experiences. That's terrific. Well, thank you very much for explaining You're your welcome. university. We we're talking about Curacao, the University of Avalon, correct? Medical University. Avalon, yes, Avalon University School of Medicine. There you go. Avalon University School of Medicine. Here we are talking with Fate, the chancellor, the owner of this university. We appreciate your time today, sir. And we're going to throw it to a music break right okay. here on CIUT. Thank you CIUT. for having me.